Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. And on this week's episode, we are on the road to Hull and back this Friday evening with a depleted squad via injury and bans. And Kev, <laughs> have you got boots? Yes, I have got boots. Um, are you available? Um, uh, no. No, I'm carrying a knee injury, so I also can't can't play. Never mind. Um, was it caused by anyone? Uh, uh, no, it wasn't. No. That's good, because we want to, want to see an increased ban. O- only myself. Now, Kevin, um, Friday. We, we had tweets over the weekend saying, oh, oh, it was a good Friday. wasn't the best day ever, was it? Well, it was still a good day. Because people don't yeah. realise that we enjoy Good Friday, win, lose or draw, as we said beforehand. Yeah, exactly. Had a great day. Had a great day around Wigan. Uh, it's just the result that uh, well, obviously yeah. let it down a little bit, but still went back to um, went back to a pub in Wigan, sat in the sunshine, had a couple more pints, got the train home, happy days. Not the result we wanted. Um in hindsight, obviously the reaction we do after the game um, is an instant reaction based on no TV viewing, no replays, no social media conversations. Were we harsh or do we still feel it was fair? Um, I haven't watched it back. I've had feedback from people um, and they've said you were honest, which is all you can be. Um, I think emotion does run high when you do it. Um, as you say, you can get caught up in the moment. Um, after a few days. Yeah, after a couple. Yeah, drink had been taken. Um, I, I, th- I just think I was honest. I think I think when you speak uh, about a Saints Wigan game, you, you do expect uh, a little bit more from us. Listen. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Um, <laughs> when you... Um, that's a, that's one from me as well. Um, we made we made chances and we were too slow in our execution. We just were just not quite clicking there uh, for whatever reason that is. But it's just not quite working at the minute. On in another year, you get you you score a couple of tries and that game is is done and dusted. It wasn't another year. I think Wigan were the better team on the day. Their defence, especially, was was absolutely fantastic. So I've no no arguments at all about the result. Um, it's just as I say, on another day, it sticks for us. We take our chances, and we're talking about a completely different outcome. Yeah, obviously, listen, we we had four breaks. If we'd have converted two of them, we'd have won the game, which is true. Yeah, but it's all if buts and maybe's. Um, and as we. You can't be bothered. Well, and you know what? It's you can't even put it down to luck necessarily, because we blew a couple of them against Wakefield at home the week before. Yeah. Um, at least two chances there, so we didn't learn yeah. our lessons. Um, so we got what we deserved. Quite frankly, yeah. I still think we're we're not clicking an attack at the moment. We're quite poor. Our last play execution is telegraphed. Fair to say. Yeah, it needs variation. I think you're right, and I think that's something I did say um, in the instant reaction. That, listen, I've spoken to a couple of different people about it. You've got to mix them kicks up. You've got to mix who's sacking them as well. Um, you have a look. <laughs> remember when, speaking about Hulk I remember when Lachlan Coot came over and we got told about his left foot kicking game all the way through the off-season and then into the early rounds and said, once he gets in, he'll be doing that. You want to see that from your full-back? We've got someone who can kick from fullback, get involved in it, get Johnny Lomax do, taking some, get Dodd taking some. And the last thing I want to see is it fall into Iggy Parsi to have to kick through uh, on the last. Um, it should be taking control off. You've got nines, two nines there who can kick. <sighs> Listen, as we say, it's not clicking and they need to find... Uh, a response from somewhere and that'll be a tough ask this week even before losing the the list of players we have through um, injury and suspension it'll be a tough ask 
Yeah, we obviously we spoke about it on Friday. Um, our next three games starting this Friday: Hull KR away, Warrington at home, Catalan away, and you could argue it doesn't get any easier with Salford at home. Next up, no, that. that's it. Yeah, Salford have ripped us apart at their place and and pushed us very very close at ours last season. Yeah, correct. Yeah, listen, Mark, if we'd have um, if Morgan Knowles had been sent off for the the alleged um, chicken wing on Chris Atkin, which he actually got found not guilty of in the end. Um, we could have lost that game, so it was luckily that the right decision was made, and he and he and he stayed on on the field and finished the game for us. Um, it's going to it's going to be a tough few weeks, though, isn't it? I, undoubtedly, with with the injuries we've got and obviously now suspension, and they're all in that key area of the pitch as well in in terms of the drive going forward. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like last year, we we struggled in the backs, and we were having to bring the the young lads through and into the the first team, and that's what we're having to do in the forwards um, this week. Looking at that squad, listen, um, you don't want to lose players through um, through suspension, especially something that they can control. Um, it's it's not great that we've lost Morgan. Um, but there's lessons need to be learned, I think, across most of our back row, if not all of it, um, to to kind of you play on the edge when you when you're in a team like Saints who are pushing for for honours, you play on the edge, and if you get that wrong, then you get and you go over the the line with it, then you're in trouble. I know it's a polarizing tackle that, that Morgan's been been done for um, were, well, we've had Wigan fans turning around going, can see nothing in it. We've had Wigan fans saying, yeah, it's a, it's not that bad, two or three games, fair enough if you get suspended for that. We've had Wigan fans and Leeds fans, strangely, don't know why, um, saying he needs to be banned for 20 games or, I don't know, commuted to Australia or um, sent to the Tower of London something, I don't know, irrelevant, so uh, barely read them, I'm trying to look for sensible opinion on it. Um, but players aren't going out there to injure others, fellow professionals. They're not doing it. Anybody who thinks that is an idiot. Like, I, that's that's my opinion anyway. I I completely understand the the need or want to abolish hit drop tackles from the game because they're dangerous. Yeah. My issue with the one on Morgan Knowles is it's happening in the middle of a, a free man tackle. There's a bit of a melee. Mike Cooper, who we do genuinely wish all the best and hope he recovers yeah. from injury quickly because we want to see. We said this about um Jai Field. We want to see the best players on the pitch. Yeah. You don't want to yeah you never want to see anyone injured Wigan and Warrington or anyone else, but he was twisting in the tackle. Now, obviously, Morgan Knowles has got five games and they're using the mitigating circumstances of injury, but they're basing the suspensions and assuming that the injury is caused by a greater force in the tackle, but with ligament injuries, that's not always the case. It can be the simple twisting motion in the wrong direction at being caught at the wrong angle, which can cause it. I think there's one earlier in the game where Morgan Smithies does Jack Wellsby, which is a far more clearer and obvious one on tape. But because Jack Wellsby doesn't get injured from it, even though the tackle is arguably far worse, he's come out with one game and uh, Morgan Knowles has come out with five. Maybe it's in the name Morgan uh, <laughs> doing it. Um, if, if, you, if you want to eradicate it, here's a way to eradicate it. Blanket five game bans. Blanket it with five game bans. If you want to eradicate it's it, do that. it's weird because if in football, if a player goes in double footed on someone and they get sent off for it, they get a free game ban, regardless of whether the player's leg is broken or whether they've escaped without injury. The the tackle is arguably the same, with the same amount of force. Doesn't necessarily the same amount of force in the tackle doesn't necessarily mean both players are going to come out with the same injury. 
which is where it probably differs than when people say, well, in a, in a court of law, if you shot someone and you kill them, you'll get more than they would if you were just wounding them. It's sport things. And listen, I think we need to take into account that injuries will happen in sport, especially in a contact sport. So I completely disagree with the five games. And in terms of trial by social media, which I think is what Paul Wellens refers to, um, I feel it was really poor form from Jermaine McGillivray to quote and push an agenda that it was the same type of tackle that did him last year when Morgan Knowles wasn't cited, wasn't found guilty of any, any offence and nothing was given for it. Um, and to try and... Imp- a, a, a fellow professional to try and influence the disciplinary in the hours beforehand, I think borders on bringing the game into disrepute. I don't disagree with you at all. Really don't disagree with you. And that's got nothing to do with Jermaine McGillivray blocking me on Twitter either. Um, and for what reason, I don't know, because I've never tweeted him. Um, Told you he shares a room with Johnny Lomax. Yeah, possibly. You know, on international right duty. Now. On international duty, I'll hasten to ask. <laughs> It might it might be uh Ryan Atkins. you might be a Ryan Atkins mate, the both Yorkshire lads. Um he ate you as well, doesn't yeah. he? What's that? <laughs> Ryan Atkins ate you as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that's I might have sweeted him though. Um <laughs> well this was right. Um yeah, <laughs> it's um yeah, it's I, I thought that was uh, in poor taste from from uh McGilvery. Show, that, that to me just shows the measure of who you are. Um, it, it really does. But you, I think it, to to go back to it and it's easy to get caught up in in um, looking at the bands and saying maybe should have got less, maybe shouldn't have got anything. As you said, in the middle of that, we up Mike Cooper um, is is sorted for a bit after. Uh, after his rehab and he can take to the field again and he has another couple of years played in the Super League level fingers crossed yeah as it is the the banter knows it, it was graded as a grade D which is two to three games and comes out with five was that a bit of a shock for you? no no um, not once you you Start hearing about him taking the uh, injury into um, into consideration, and as soon as you heard on that morning that he was going to be missing for the next nine to twelve months, I think I was almost expecting a couple more, or at least one more. I was almost expecting it to be a six, um, because they've got the the ability to do that. Um, but no, it wasn't a surprise really. Um, as soon as he went to to disciplinary I think the, the surprise and it's not to kind of go off on one like on a tangent but it's almost as the surprise that it was graded the same as uh, or given the same punishment as Gil Hudson's um, the punch and I know that um, I think it was was it Tom Johnson he punched as said it's not the same he wasn't knocked out and it wasn't a, a, a full uh, full blown punch but the fact that they were graded the same, or given the same, sorry, not graded the same, they were graded differently. They were given the same amount of games. I think that's where you kind of fall down with your um, wanting consistency. I think that's the issue when you when you talk about consistency with it and giving Morgan Knowles the upper um, band that you can give, and then you look at something like that, you think dalton has got previous... Kev, so here's a question for you. So you, you 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 said earlier on at the start that players don't go out to injure other players. Yeah. So on that basis, then Morgan Knowles, whether he's committed the hip drop or not, is it careless and reckless or deliberate? Careless and reckless. Gil Dudson. Yeah. Getting up off the floor. Looking down at Tom Johnson lying prone and looking up at him and decides to pull his fist back and punch it into the man's face. Yeah. Is that careless and reckless or is that deliberate? 
No, that's deliberate. But what I mean by players don't go out to injure other players is no one crosses that white line and thinks. Gil Dudson didn't cross that white line and think, I want to have Tom Johnson today. No, so my next question then is, Kev, should a deliberate action that can co- could cause serious injury... Yeah. And we all grew up under the 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 police campaigns of one punch can kill. Yeah. Which it can. If you catch someone wrong, dead. Yeah. Does a deliberate punch to the face on a man who's not defending himself and is wide open on the floor worse than Morgan Knowles? Yes. And they lies the inconsistency of the rugby league disciplinary panel. Yeah, that's it. it th- that's it. As I say, players don't go over the white line and think I'm going to do a player here. It happens in the heat of the moment. You push, you push past that line, and something clicks. They're not going out there to do it. The fact that they will then go and do it does happen. It does. I'd be an idiot myself if I turned around and said it doesn't, because you, you've just given the perfect example that Gil Dudson snapped. And slap someone, well, punch someone. You know it what? Just if, it sense. if I'm being perfectly honest, Kevin, like we've highlighted the Morgan Smithies tackle, which is a more clear, obvious definition of a hip drop. But in reality, in a split second, if a man goes past you, yeah, and yeah. you try and grab him and bring him to the floor, it almost seems to me like a natural action to try and do. It probably is, and what they're probably trying to do is get a learned behaviour that you don't just do that, that you, you trust in, in your your other lads in defence, that you don't have to do that. But if they're serious about getting rid of hip drop tackles, if there's one from any player, any club, any team, and you want to get rid of it, five games. Can I be, five big games. Can I be really out there? Go on. I have a theory. This is uh, where it gets weird. Here a we theory that most of these injuries and bad injuries tend to happen in three man tackles. Yeah. Whether that's the third man coming in with a bit of a cannonball action or twisting to try and ground someone to the floor. Could we ever reach a stage where tackles are limited to two men? Yes. Does that take away yeah. from the sport? It possibly does, but it wouldn't surprise me to see that coming. We've seen how Rugby Union has um, pushed forward with keeping high tackles. You can't tackle above, I think it's like the the armpit level. Um, Even in the community game, they were trying to put in that you couldn't tackle above the waist. To see something like that coming would not surprise me. So turning around and saying, could we see it? Yes. Will we see it? I'm not sure. But could we see it? Wouldn't surprise me. Would it lead to more attacking rugby? Yeah, it could do. It could do. And it because one would have to go high, one would have to go low. Because otherwise, if you both go if you both go high, you can the play can still keep going forward. If you both go low, he's got his arms free. So it, it wouldn't surprise me to see the third man in the tackle outboard. And that'd be something that if they brought it in at the uh, beginning of a season. You'd see penalty after penalty after penalty for about six weeks and then it had just disappeared. I'd like to see it. My issue at the moment with it is, <coughs> and I'm speaking again as a fan, a lay person, who's somebody who's never played the game, apart from when we beat Wigan twice as fans and I played on the wing and scored. Never forget, Kevin. There's a video somewhere <laughs> of that. Um, my impression is that players get held up in the tackle. Two men hold up. Allows the defensive line to get set before the third man comes in and aims to essentially cannonball the man to the floor, yeah. and it's to slow the play down. Yeah. Um, yeah. and that for me is where the danger comes in when a player's being wrestled, they can't see where the tackle is coming from, and all of a sudden they get crashed into and they're, they're off balance. And the amount of injuries yeah. that we've seen probably to Saints players and Saints have probably caused to opposition players due to it. I wonder whether that's the one we need to be looking at. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. Don't disagree that, that that could be a way to get rid of some of this. As you say, some of it is just natural 
reaction. Because that's it, the, the, the Smithies one. Do I see much wrong with it? Well, as you say, it's natural reaction. You don't. You don't see much wrong with it. Same as the Knowles one, where you, you're kind of looking and thinking, yeah, the, the, the making... I genuinely don't think he's meant to. I think he's, no. he's running backwards. He's, 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 he yeah. gets turned and he hits his knee while it's in the air. He's not mm. landed on it. He's not twisted and fell on it. Because the injury happens before he goes to ground. Yeah. I think he's just really, really unfortunate. And I think he's been made an example of. Yeah, possibly so. That's it. It's in, it's obviously seen the tweet going round with the number of citations that um, Knowles has had. And then, Again, yeah. trial by social media, Kevin. 44 yes. citations. 35 of them were complete no charge to begin with. He got a couple of cautions. Four grade A one game bans. The two game of the other week and then this one. And do you know what? I think out of the four one game bans, Kev, three of them were for late hits on the tackler. At least two of them I'm fuming about. I'm more angry about from Morgan Knowles than that one on Friday because the late hits on the tack on the ball uh, ball carriers pass the ball away, they're stupid. Yeah. They're the ones I think we're we're soft on. Sioni, Curtis, and Morgan. Hitting the tackle late, they're stupid, especially when again it now should be becoming a learned behaviour that you can't do it. I think that's it. Learn a lesson from these. And this is what in these five games that I know it's four Saints games and an England game, is it? That, for, that for, Sean Wayne's not going to pick him. It'll be four first team games and the reserve one instead. In the yeah. Um, but the, learn your lesson from this. Perfect time for education. But I think everybody has to do that. And you've got to take a collective responsibility in doing it. Okay. Right. Squad then, Kev. Who's yes. Left? Who's left? I don't know. Me and you in it, I think. Uh, I've got the. Uh, I've got the number 36 jersey. <laughs> wow. Um, Mat- Siona Mataltia, Morgan Knowles, Curtis Sinanen, Iggy Parsi all drop out. Um, well, all said in the week. And this is probably where people are a bit harsh on, um, possibly including myself, on the likes of Iggy Parsi who are playing busted uh, on Friday. And they need to kind of manage him through this time. They're all dropping out with Dan Hill, Red V.net sponsor, Dan Hill, uh, Wes Bruins, Mackenzie Buckley, and I always forget Lewis Baxter's first name, but I've remembered it just in time to Definitely say that. Lewis. It's not Lewis, Lewis Baxter. No, Lewis Baxter. Um, yeah, are the four who come in. Um, <sighs> Kev, Pick with a fully team. fit squad, yeah, there would have been a little bit of debate this week on whether we should take Lewis Dodd out of the firing line and maybe play Wellsby in the halves um, and put John Benison at fullback. I think that conversation is completely off the table. With the amount yeah. of players we've got missing, you're not dropping your scrum half. I don't think he would have been dropped anyway. Um, I genuinely don't. No, I, but... I don't, but the conversation... And possibility yeah, conversation. would have been an option. There'd, there'd have been I don't a think it is now. Yeah, there'd have been a conversation around the backs and how you how you possibly fresh it up there. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but uh, Wellsby, Lomax, and Dodd will be the full back and half backs as long as they're all fit. Will be the full back and half backs on Friday night. I think you almost need to keep Wellsby at full back for that consistency and the fact that. He's going to get absolutely peppered by Jordan Abdul's high ball. Which, yes. Listen, I hope Lewis Dodd and, uh, and Johnny Lomax and Jack Wellsby can watch and learn from because Abdul's high kicks are probably the best in the league. Yeah. That's it. He's in, he's in a great uh, vein of form. He's he's a good half pack for them. He fits how they play. Um, and our wingers. Well, anyone in that back line, your three quarters, so your centres, your wingers, and your fullback are going to have a torrid night with him. Keep putting the ball up in the air and hoping that the lovely Hull weather makes it an absolute nightmare. So it's going to be 25 degrees on Friday night. 
Is it? Somewhere in the world. Somewhere. But just... well, probably not Hull. Um, not Hull. Right, Kev, who misses out? I'm going to go Dan Hill. Yeah. Wes Bruins. Yeah. T. Ritson. Yeah. And Mackenzie Buckley. I don't know. Because I've sat here trying to put together a second role and a subs bench and then a three-quarter line from that. And I don't know how we're going to do it. My issue is I don't think you want to be playing too many of the kids. I say kids, yeah, half my age, so that's good enough. Um, I don't think you want to be playing too many inexperienced players. But I think we're going to have to. I think I think it's going to come to that. I think Matty Lees and Louis start at prop. Yeah. And then your bench for me would be Jake Wingfield. Yeah. Lewis Baxter. Yeah. So they're going to... I'd, I'd use them both as props. And then my other two substitutes would be Sam Josh Royal Delaney. and George Delaney. Oh, you, yeah, you got George... Sorry, George Delaney. The prop, but yeah, George Delaney and Sam... Ro George Delaney, Sam Royal, Jake Wingfield and Lewis Baxter as your bench. I... <sighs> When we're looking at second rowers in that, or back rowers, let's say, in that squad, I think James Bell and Sam Royal start. Um, it's then you've got the option of possibly playing Roby at 13. You've got, you've not got many other options. You've got Baxter can play back row. And then you're looking at, I've seen people on about, experimenting <laughs> who else you experiment with though I think the only thing that came to mind as the wild card that I could drag it well people have spoken about Conrad potentially playing second role I don't want to see Conrad in the second role I think there's too much almost defensive work in the sorry Conrad fitter than I am but I, I don't think that would be good for him you know what I'm going to go with a potential potential wild card because I have asked him in an interview if he would ever, if he's ever considered moving positions to the second role as he goes through his career. Is that man pictured there? I feel like I'm on the mass singer coming up with some absolutely barmy idea here. Uh, but I, listen, I've asked him that question a couple of years ago because he does that strong running and he's good in defence. Have have you got a couple who could do that role? Mark Percival carries the ball well out. Possibly. Will, Will Hoppawati probably hasn't got the body for it at the moment. No. And as uh, you say, Comrade. Comrade can could do it, but I I just don't want to see Comrade in there. I'd rather see Comrade coming out from centre. Because I think do you we... need that explosion from centre. In that case, then does John Benison come in on the wing and you potentially put Will Hoppawati in at centre? Yeah. And you're going to have to move someone out. Yeah. Because we just yeah. need to get the bodies in the team. Yes. I th I think that's what... Uh, if if we went with something as mad as that, as mad as making some moving into the second role, yeah. Or Harrell, because people keep mentioning it on social media. Yeah. You'd have to you'd have to do something like that. Or it might be the chance for T. I don't, I think Benison is ahead of him still. Um, and I think people, there's there's an old adage that you're the best player in the world when you're not getting picked. Um, you become almost undroppable when you're not getting the, picked. The, the the old adage from Kev Pender 2016. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quoting yeah. yourself. Quoting myself. A wise man once said. Um, <laughs> a wise man or a wise fan? Yeah, both. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this isn't it. Is it is it the, his chance to give us a bit of pace? Will they put him under that pressure when you've got, as you just mentioned, the kicks from Abdul? Ah, Benison's probably no offense to Team Ritson, but one of them options that we've seen what he can do on the wing in Super League. We've seen that he's a fullback. We've seen he's pretty safe under the high ball. 
Pass, he was he was excellent under the high ball, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. So it's you, it, it's you almost seen, you, you wait, wait up like that. Who was the the Leeds player the other week who got scored? Uh, was it a one? Hooley, was it Hooley who's gone back Luke, on the Luke Hooley came up from the championship, got absolutely peppered by Jordan Abdul, and has got probably the worst rugby league reason of any player I've ever seen ever, except people who get NA because they played two minutes of a game. Um, yeah, you don't, I'm not saying it would happen, but you could almost see if T Ritson was named in the lineup, he would be the, would be the one targeted under the high ball all game. Yeah, that's it. If we if we did move someone out, like if we if we played with Makinson on the wing, we'll say it, and Hopalati is the centre with Percy and Richardson on the other side. I think they would still try and go to Makinson to stop him coming out because I think that's what what teams seem to be doing now. But I think the variation would be there. That would be let's see what his hands are like. They wouldn't just keep going down down Makinson's side. They they. Definitely test the other side and see what the hands are like because if they start dropping the ball and you're getting field position off that, why bother going that way? Now, we've seen everyone saying it's going to be hard this week, we might not win this week. So, why, if we lose this week again, will the doom mongers come out when you've when it's been predicted if you've got that many injuries and bans? You could potentially lose. So why does why would it be a shock if we lost? Because for me, I think we're going into this game as underdogs. Um, we should. I think we just have to. The tactic we probably need to go with is just you know what, open up the attacking playbook and just play what you see, and try and play round. Because I don't think we've got the the pack size to be trying to go down the middle. I think we need to spread the ball. Yeah. I agree. I think um, you have a look at the metres that, that we made against Wigan, which in the forwards wasn't great and in the backs was. There needs to be a sharing of that workload. So it needs to go through your second rowers, whoever that might be. It needs to go through your props. But also, as you say, your centres and your wingers need to get plenty of ball to just try and make Hulk I think. Hulk Is it fair to say, Kev, that the 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 meter numbers don't always tell the story of how hard yeah. a player has worked because obviously Wigan are kicking so deep that anybody who collects the ball is making thirty meters before first contact. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, that's that is true. That is true. But I do feel like they do need to be spread out a little bit because our, our still... pack numbers were terrible. Yeah, in terms of meters made the other night. Thanks. Yeah. But that's that's what, as you say, that's what happened. And that's what we need to do with our kicks. Listen, if we give away a seven-tackle set because Lewis Dodds or Johnny Lomax or Jack Wells be pinged it long and it's gone dead in goal, so be it. So be it. I'd back our defence to keep out a seven-tackle set. Unfortunately, though, what we're doing is pinging it straight to a winger or a fullback and letting them make that. 30 metres that you're saying, and starting a set-off on the 40 rather than starting a set-off. And it, you know what we're trying to do? We did it when Theo Farge, I've said this before, we did it when Theo Farge was there. You're trying to put it in an area and, and contain it. doesn't work when you kick him from the 30, and, our 30 and 40, because you're putting a long bomb up and they've got time. They could, they can have a cup of tea underneath it. It, it. it takes that long to get there. Your chase then needs to be rapid if you move up like a dog's back leg, you've got teams who'll just run round you, and it, it just doesn't work. We need variations. Hulk are fresh off a 40 nil victory over Hull FC. And in good form, but it is hard to judge them a little bit because they did play Hull FC last week, who were generally been the whipping boys against quite a lot this season. Um, but they're definitely favourites for me this week on home turf. I know we always say it's a hard game, but the stats show that we do generally win there. But I just think it's going to be a real, real tough one. And if we if we do come away with any sort of victory, I think it, it's going to be an absolute fantastic two points. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one of the best victories we've had over there if we manage to get over the line. You're right, Hull KR, listen, they've, they've gone over to... Um, to the nearest and dearest and 
battered him. Absolutely battered him. They're missing a couple. So the uh, the Bachelor derby obviously isn't on with uh, Joe Altinger and James. Um, it's on in the buffet cart. Yeah, <laughs> James suspended. Um, and they are missing one or two, but uh, I've seen a couple of their fans saying if, if we'd have played Easter Monday, they'd have had half a team out as well because they had players busted up earlier in the week who have the like bumps and bruises have settled down. <sighs> You look, there's a lot of quality in that team. Don't have to tell anybody watching this about Lachlan Coots and what we think about how good he can be. The centres are both NRL centres. Ryan Hall, I mean, still doing it now uh, in his mid-30s. Mentioned Abdul before. Parcel and Lytton as a, a hooking duo are just... <laughs> They've got experience and they've got that that bit of zip about them. They've got plenty. That's without mentioning Elliot Minicello, who's come back into in Minicello, sorry, who's, who's come back in this season after injury. And it's without mentioning the likes of Mikey Lewis, who is one of them mercurial halfbacks who'll be trying to put on a show and show that he is above our other mercurial halfback in Lewis Dodd. He'll be looking to to dominate that that challenge though. Yeah, um, KR are missing Sasso, Sue, I apologise if I've not pronounced that first name right, James Batchelor, who both miss out through suspension, as well as Sam Wood, who misses out through a minor hamstring injury. Uh, replacing them in the squad, Jimmy Kinehorst, there's a blast from the past, um, who's been out on dual reds for the last couple of weeks at Keely Cougars, and Phoenix Lalu Tagagi. Also makes the 21 man squad, as does Corey Hall. Call him PLT. To... Just call him PLT like everybody else does. They're trying to uh, do me with the names. <laughs> Glad the radio country isn't doing anymore. Yeah, I was going to say it's a good job you're not doing that. <laughs> right, Kev. Predictions. I'm going to have to go away from me, Mark Lawrence, and here, aren't I? Well, you're not, because Mark Lawrence says that they're going to win even when he knows they're getting beat 7-0. That's true. Saints are in for a tough evening. There's my prediction. Score, come on. Two scores in it. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be for us. Straighter. Saints by eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> how many times have we been stung in the past, though, by going, do you know what? We're definitely going to lose tonight and putting a tenner on someone because we're absolutely going to get beat. And then Saints do us. And I've done it a couple of times in my life, and nobody's standing there thinking, what an absolute idiot you are. <laughs> That's true. That's yes, true. Um, we travel in hope rather than any sort of expectation. But do you know what? Stranger really things shine. have happened. Yeah. Strange things have happened. Um, and uh, listen, I'm saying there'll be two scores in it. We've still got enough to be competitive. I'm not. I'm not turning around and saying, "Ah, oh, we're going to get absolutely hammered." We've got enough to be competitive. There, we play the right game. We try and nullify their halfbacks and keep their forwards from getting getting forward. I know you you're looking all around the park and they've got strike players, but you nullify that and you do a good enough job and you keep your noses in front. Or don't bother keeping your noses in front and just win it in the last minute. That'll do. Yeah. I mean, that's. Are we on telly this week? Are we? No, no, no is it not even Warrington? Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I've got to say about that. Um, yeah. Right then. I'll see you on the road on Friday, Kev. Can't wait. If the M62 shot coming on, that's just going to top it off. Right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you 
outside of is it still Craven Park or do you name it some yeah. mad name? Uh, we'll see it outside Craven Park. But the instant reaction, hopefully celebrating the Saints win where we all go, We told you so, we told you we'd win. <laughs> Bye. Bye.